I'm scientist Heather from Scientists in School. Welcome to Wings Over Water, a water bird adventure. Today we're going to be talking about a large group of birds that live in or near water. Some have the ability to swim, float on the water surface, wade, even dive. There are three main types of water birds, shorebirds, wading birds, and waterfowl. Shorebirds are often very hard to tell apart. They love to live near the edges of bodies of water, and they have very sensitive bills with the, which they use to probe into the mud and sand when they're looking for food. One of the most common types of shorebirds are sandpipers. Other examples are the piping plover and Wilson snipe. The second type are wading birds. So wading birds such as great blue herons, great egrets, and American bitterns have long legs, long necks, and harpoon-like beaks. They're carnivores, and they prefer living in marshes, swamps, and other shallow bodies of water. Waterfowl are birds you may be more familiar with, as you can see them sometimes in your neighborhood river, pond, or small lake. They include ducks, geese, and swans. They spend most of their time non-flying time on the water, and they have special adaptations that help keep them warm and dry in the water. So join me on a wonder walk as we explore some of these water birds. Have you ever wondered why some water birds have webbed feet? If you've ever used a pair of flippers at a pool, you may have noticed how much power and speed they give you while swimming. Ducks, geese, and swans have webbing between their toes, which they use like flippers while they're paddling through the water. Diving ducks in particular use their webbed feet to maneuver down to the bottom to gather aquatic plants, small invertebrates, and even fish. Canada geese are able to paddle their feet in the water even while sleeping. Have you ever wondered why some water birds float? We need pool noodles to keep us floating. How do water birds do it? Like all birds, water birds have hollow bones, which make their bodies quite light. Waterfowl have water resistant feathers that interlock and can trap air bubbles between their feathers and skin, adding to their buoyancy. They also have internal air sacs that work like balloons to hold them up, kind of like internal water wings. Have you ever wondered why water birds clean their feathers? Birds have two types of feathers, contour feathers, which are long and rigid and give them their shape and color, and down feathers, which are soft and fluffy and sit closest to their skin. Each feather has a central hollow shaft called the rachis. Hundreds of branches radiate off the rachis called barbs. Branching off the barbs are structures called barbules, some of which have tiny hooks or barbicels. The barbicels or hooks interlock the neighboring barbs together like Velcro to form a wind and water resistant barrier. When a bird moves around, this can cause some barbules to come out of alignment, allowing air and water to pass through. Birds will move their beak through their feathers to align them back in place. This is called preening. In addition, birds have a special preen gland near the base of their tail that produces an oily, waxy substance that helps waterproof feathers. While preening, birds rub their beaks on the gland and spread the waxy substance over their feathers so they are evenly coated and protected. Most birds will preen several times a day to keep themselves healthy. Imagine if you had to take a bath three times a day. Have you ever wondered how water birds feed? In general, waterfowl have bills that are round tipped and soft around the edges so that they can locate their food by touch, much like you using your fingers to locate hidden toys in a sandbox. The bills are lined with lamellae, which are small comb-like structures arranged in rows along the inside of the bill. When the birds feed, they get lots of water and sediment inside their bill. The lamellae filter out all the things they don't want and trap things like small invertebrates and plants and seeds. Waterfowl feed in a couple different ways. Trumpeter swans, Canada geese, and mallards all tip up or dabble to forage on submerged aquatic plants. However, their varying neck lengths allow them to access foods at different water depths. For example, the extremely long neck of trumpeter swans allows them to access food resources up to 75 centimeters deep, while the much shorter neck of a mallard limits them to feeding in only a few centimeters of water. Some waterfowl, such as mergansers and buffleheads, dive underwater for food. They eat such things as aquatic plants, aquatic invertebrates, and fish. They squeeze the air out of their feathers before they dive and use their web feet to move through the water. Grazing is another common feeding mode employed by species such as the Canada goose and many other ducks. The bills of Canada geese are uniquely adapted for grasping and snipping new shoots of grasses, leaves, and stems. 
Northern shovelers are known as strainers because they slurp up water and jet it through lamellae to extract food items. Its large, spoon-shaped bill is adapted for sifting large amounts of muddy water. They even have lamellae on their tongues. Have you ever wondered how water birds stay warm in the winter? Although many water birds migrate to warmer places in the winter, there are some that will stay if the conditions are right. They often make me feel cold when I see them standing on that ice on a pond. In order to keep warm, they use their down feathers to trap heat against their body. They also have a layer of fat to provide insulation. They will exhibit behaviors such as standing on one leg or tucking their bills against their body to conserve heat. They also have something amazing in their legs called a counter current heat exchange system. Their veins and arteries in their legs are very close to each other, so as warm blood leaves their body, it heats up the cold blood returning to their body. Have you ever wondered if there are different types of swans? There are three species of swan in Ontario. Mute swans are easily identified by a bright orange bill and distinctive knob on the forehead. They have been introduced from Europe, meaning they aren't native to North America. They don't make much noise, hence the name mute. Tundra swans usually have yellow markings below the eyes. They stay in large flocks, except when breeding in the Arctic during the summer. We can see them in southern parts of Canada, either during the winter or while they are migrating. Trumpeter swans almost always have solid black bills with the black markings extending to the eyes. Trumpeter swans are quite large and also have a distinctive call. Have you ever wondered why some swans have a yellow tag on their wing? If you see a swan in Ontario with a yellow tag on its wing, it is a trumpeter swan. About 200 years ago, these swans were extirpated, or locally extinct, in eastern Canada due to overhunting and habitat loss. They have been gradually reintroduced to Ontario over the last 30 years using eggs taken from flocks in western Canada and Alaska. The tags don't seem to bother the birds at all. The tags allow scientists to monitor the birds and record where and when they have been seen and their overall condition. This is equivalent to your parents tracking you on your iPhone. Have you ever wondered why some male and female water birds are different colors? Some water birds, especially ducks, are different colors. Here you can see the male mallard has a bright green head while the female is mostly brown. In many ducks, the males have colorful plumage or feathers. This makes them very attractive to female birds during breeding season. The female ducks usually have dull colored feathers such as brown or gray. This coloration allows them to be camouflaged as they incubate eggs in their nest and protects them from predators. Thank you for joining me on this water bird adventure. Keep watching for some interesting water bird trivia and don't forget to download our free version of Bingo called Birdo. See you next time.